enlightenment of Anand. With Buddha's enlightenment, a new era ushered in man's inner journey. The intensity and the essence of it continues to gain momentum even after 3000 years of Buddha's emergence. Since Buddha, many scientific developments have happened. There is no way to know what Buddha actually said, although he never used anyone like Ostensky or Plato or Vivekananda. Buddha himself was his own interpreter. However, Buddha's Mahaparinirvana brought a problem. He spoke for 42 years. Buddha became enlightened when he was about 42 years of age and then he lived up to 82. For 42 years he was speaking morning, afternoon and evening. That time there were no scientific methods for recording what he was saying. Our times are far better because we can record each word and make it available worldwide. No one has to interpret. I can record my own words in my own voice. Yet still look at the quantum of work Buddha did and its impact after 3000 years. Buddha's work surpasses works of all the religious preceptors put together. When he died, the first question was how to collect it all. He had said so much. 42 years is a long span of time and many had become enlightened in those 42 years. Jesus' ministry lasted for three years. But those who became enlightened during the time of Buddha had become crystallized in the heart. Indeed, that is easier, simpler, and people tend to move to the simplest process or the shortcut. Why bother? If you can reach a point directly, straight, then why go in a roundabout way? And when Buddha was alive, there was no need for anyone else to interpret him. He was his own spokesman, so the need was never felt. There were thousands of arhats and bodhisattvas. They all gathered. Only those were called to the gathering who had become enlightened. Obviously, because they would not misinterpret Buddha. They have reached to the same level of consciousness that Buddha had attained. And that is true. They could not misinterpret him. It was impossible for them. They had also experienced the same universe of the beyond, same innerness within. They had moved to the farther shore, but they all said, we have never bothered much about his words since we became enlightened. We have listened to him because his words were sweet and soulless to him. It has its own music. We have listened to him because his words were pure music. We have listened to him because just listening to him was a sheer joy. We have listened to him because that was the only way to be close to him. Just to sit by his side and listen to him was rejoicing. It was a benediction, but we did not bother about what he was saying. Once we attained, there was no need. We were not listening to him from the head. We were not collecting the words in memory. Our own heads and memories stopped functioning long ago. Somebody became enlightened 30 years before Buddha died. Now for 30 years he sat there by the side of Buddha, listening as one would listen to the wind passing through the pine trees 
Oh, one listens to the song of the birds. Oh, to the raindrops falling on the rooftop. But they were not listening intellectually. Whereas we all listen intellectually and that creates the problem. You try to interpret. You try to accept what appeals to you, what fits within the framework of your religion, your religious framework, and do not accept the rest. So they said, we have not carried any memory of it whatsoever. He must have said was beautiful, and what he said we cannot recollect. Just to be by him was a joy. It was very difficult now how to collect his works. All the monks were sent at times to different places. The only man who had lived continuously with Buddha for 42 years was Anand. Anand was Buddha's cousin and he was Buddha's personal attendant, his caretaker. He had listened to him almost every word that he had uttered and Anand listened to every single word. Even if Buddha was talking to somebody privately, Anand was present. Anand was always, almost present like a shadow. He had heard everything. Whatsoever has emerged from the lips of Buddha and he must have said many things to Anand when there was nobody. They must have talked just on going to the bed in, in the night as well. Anand remembers that all while traveling or moving from one place to another Anand was traveling with him. Buddha must have spoken some words. Anand remembers that. Anand used to sleep in the same room just to take care of him. Buddha may need something. Buddha may need something in the night. He may feel cold or he may feel hot. Maybe he may like the window to be opened or closed or he may feel thirsty and may need some water or something. He was getting old. He may feel sick. So Anand stayed with him, but there was a problem. Anand was not enlightened. He had heard everything that Buddha uttered publicly and privately too. Still Anand was not enlightened. You may wonder why Anand was not enlightened. All the enlightened monks must have gossiped together. There was no one else who could have said, I am friendly with Buddha, except Anand. And Anand was also his cousin and that too older than Buddha. Anand was not only his cousin brother but two years older than Buddha as well. So when he had come to be initiated, he asked for a few things before his initiation. Because in India, the elder brother has to be respected just like your father. Even the older cousin has to be respected just like the father. So what if he is cousin? Still he is brother. So Anand said to Buddha, before I take initiation, I have to ask you something. Once I become your monk, I will not be able to have my own say. I will have to follow your commands. Then whatsoever you say, I will have to do. But before that, I order you as your elder brother to grant me three things. Remember these three things. These are significant. First, I will always be with you, always. You cannot say to me, Anand, go somewhere else or do something else. 
you cannot send me to another village or place to preach or to give your message. This is my first order to you. Second, I will always be present. Even if you are talking to someone privately, I want to hear everything. Whatsoever you are going to say in your life, I want to be an audience to it. So you will not be able to tell me anything otherwise. I will not go remember it. Third, I am not much interested in being enlightened. Instead, I am much more interested in just being with you. So if enlightenment means separating from you, I do not care a bit about it. Only if I can remain with you, even after enlightenment, I am not willing to be enlightened otherwise. So forget about it. And Buddha nodded his head in yes to all these three things. He had to because he was younger than Anand. And he followed those three things throughout his life. Only once Buddha had asked for Anand's permission when he was going to meet Yashoda, his wife, after he became enlightened. And otherwise Anand was always present. And there is a reason. Buddha said, I would like to speak to Yashodhara alone. Anand objected. Buddha said, there is nothing like attachment left in me. She is she has many things she wants to tell me because I left the palace without telling her anything or seeking her permission. She may ask me questions, but seeing you, she will not say anything. And the only thing Yashodara asked was the enlightenment not possible with my presence. So it is only to meet Yashodara, Buddha sought the permission from Anand. The conference of Arhats and Bodhisattvas decided that only Anand could relate Buddha's words. He had a beautiful memory. He had listened to everything and that too very attentively. But the problem is he is not yet enlightened. We cannot rely on him. His mind may play tricks or his mind may change things unconsciously. He may not do it deliberately, but he is still has a great unconsciousness left in him. He may think he was, he has heard that Buddha said this and he may never have said it. He may uh, delete a few words or add a few words, who knows. And we do not have any criteria because many things that he has heard, only he has heard and there is no witness to it. Anand at that time was 84 years old mom. He is still sitting outside the hall on the steps. The doors were closed and he was sitting outside on the doorsteps, crying profusely. He cried profusely sitting on the steps. He was weeping because he was not allowed inside. An 84 years old man weeping like a child Imagine the innocence of the mature one flowing incessantly through tears. Imagine the innocence of the mature one flowing incessantly through tears. And the man who had lived for 42 years with Buddha was not allowed in. Now he was really in anguish. You can imagine his state of in anguish. Imagine the intensity 